So my mom's been wanting a window in her side garage door to let some light in. She's very allergic to light switches. So she wanted a window so she had some light so when she goes in and out of the garage, she didn't have to turn on the light. And we looked around the internet and I couldn't find a window that I was happy with or size-wise or price-wise. And I looked through my pile of windows at work and this one was just right. And the price was just right too, so it was I got it for pretty cheap. So I decided to use an RV window in a house door. Now it is a little bit thick for the door, so I do end up making some shims for it. The first thing I do though is I'm gonna make a template. And I find a whole size, a uh, whole saw, the same size as the radius, so I can mark out my radius. And I just cut it out here with a razor knife after I make my marks. Then I'm just testing the fit here of that size and that size is a little tight which is good because that means the other side of it is going to be a little big which is what I want. I have a bad habit of cutting my holes the exact same size and then you don't have any play in case you cut it a little crooked or it's hard to get in and out. So I like that this is just a little bit bigger than the window. And then I'm gonna figure out how high I wanted to mount it and put my marks and then get center. So I have a basic idea of where center is on the door. Okay, so the way I find center is, um, so we have 31 and 5 eighths. We want to find center of that. I just break it down into three different measurements here and then have them. So this is 30. If you know what half of 31 is, great. But half of 30 is 15. Half of 1 is a half. Half of 5 eighths is 5 sixteenths. All you do is double the bottom number. And that will give you half of this. So if it's 3 quarter, half of 3 quarter is 3 eighths. Then if you want to just add these together, I usually just use a tape measure and figure out, you know, your 15 and a half, and then plus 5 sixteenths. You could do that. Or 2 goes into 16 eight times. So that would make this 8 sixteenths is a half. And then you could just add these. 8 and 5 is 13. So it would give you 15 and 13 sixteenths. And then I would measure across and do your 15 and 13 sixteenths, find your mark, and then I would go across from each side and check it this way. And then if it's off a little bit, you can adjust it from there. And that's how I usually find center on something. So I measure and remeasure multiple times. And um, here I'm using the wrong tape measure. Um, I forgot I had one of these tape measures at home, the lefty-righty ones, and started using that, and that makes it a lot easier. And then I'm just using some squares um, to figure out where center is on the window. And this is just to get me a, a starting point when I find center like this. And I just kind of make some marks around it to figure out about where it's going to go and then I'll use the template so here I have the squares on the center of the door this is the lefty righty tape measure way better to use so when you flip them around you can get the right reading you don't end up cutting something or marking something short so here I'm just getting some marks again just to try to get a good center starting point And then I measure from side to side, make sure they're even, and make any adjustments from there that I need.
Once I'm happy with it, I put some marks around it so I have a starting point for the template. So I'm just making sure that that's square. So the reason why I didn't use the window as a template is because of the lip that the window has on it. I didn't think I could get an accurate mark on there. So I take quite a while before I cut a hole. I just want to cut the hole once. And I definitely don't want the hole too tight or too small because I know in the past that's what I tend to do. So. Just using a square to get some of the straight lines. And measure the top and bottom, make sure that line is going to be square. And like I said, I really take my time. So <laughs> these are even sped up, but I take quite a while to make sure that my marks are exactly where I want them. Then I put the template down. Then double check with the window ring. Make sure that I'm happy before I Put any more marks on there. I just tape it down so it won't move so I can mark the, the corners, the radius corners. Just double checking one more time. That's probably triple checking. So I'm just trying to figure out about where center is for the hole saw. And then I'm going to cut my corners out first. So this radius will be, uh, the window will fit right into that radius I'm cutting out. And I don't like to cut all the way through. So I just cut until the center arbor goes through the other side. So you can see where they're at. And then I'll finish cutting through from the other side. I don't have to worry about a big blowout. Getting a bunch of chips on the back side. So to my surprise, those doors are made of fiberglass. I assumed they were like thin metal, but they were fiberglass. Just put some tape down and then using my least favorite tool, the jigsaw. And we just cut the rest of it out. That's pretty self-explanatory there. Checking the fit of the window. Then I'm making up some shims because like I said, that window's too thick. And put some silicone on it and put it in place and I got to flip it over so I just used a uh, piece of plywood and some clamps to hold it in place this was like one of the first projects I did after my shoulder surgery So I had to paint screws black. I hate painting screws. They chip real easy when you try to put them in. So I, I scuffed them and primed them and painted them black. But then um, when I screwed the frame down, I used non-painted screws. So I started all the holes with non-painted screws. And it's twice the work, but I just didn't want scratched um, screws in there. And I didn't want to have to repaint any. So 
I pull out the non-painted ones and then I install a painted one. They'll go in a lot easier that way. Then I just throw the shims underneath all the four sides. I didn't worry about the radius. Then you can just, the little gap in there, I was just going to fill in with some black silicone. But that's why it's taking so long to screw it in, because I'm doing it twice. I just remove the piece of plywood that's holding it down and it turned out pretty good she was super happy with it she's been wanting that for quite a few years now so I'm glad I got to help her out and get that done so thanks for watching that project and we'll see you again next time